Today, I would like to introduce our current opportunity, um, which we simply um, call Glenridge Medical 22, and you'll pretty quickly see why. The opportunity um, is a very large two buildings, which uh, in square feet is 185 for those that's still in, in, in metric. Um, that's simply divided by 10, so that's roughly 18,500 square meters. Um, so it's in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, the, the building uh, opportunity that we are going to investigate here or display today is really an opportunity where we are going to reposition this opportunity from um, fairly dominant office um, environment to a medical environment. And that's really where the opportunity lies and the value is created. Um, you'll see um, the building is a fairly big size building and the amount of equity that we're raising is 5 million equity. So the property um, is extremely well located. We're gonna go through that in a lot of details very very significant tenants and we've got a partner which has got a significant track record but let's go a little bit into the detail and i'm going to repeat a lot of details if you have heard um, obvious talk before but uh, for those that are new um, to atlanta and georgia i'm just going to give a bit of a detailed overview of that state um, and the reason why we kind of like that state is um, specifically the landlord friendly, which I alluded to earlier. Um, there's a very interesting um, peculiarity in this state, which is called the certificate of need. And that basically means that um, if a doctor has um, got a facility, uh, maybe an MRI machine or some fairly expensive equipment, this um, equipment, also a surgery center, are registered against the need in a specific area. Uh, why that is significant for us as landlords is that the competition of that doctor cannot invade his territory unless he can prove there is additional need for this specific service. And uh, hence it actually protects the doctor, which is in, in real terms our tenant, and therefore they protect this um, space or this location. And from that, we also get longer term leases. So that's a very important thing for us. It's not in all the states, but it's specifically in Georgia. And the nice thing about it, it it's registered against the specific address of the property. So it means if the doctor leaves, he doesn't leave with the doctor. So that's very significant. Um, Georgia has absolutely pro business um, a lot of the big companies specifically the fortune 500 companies are relocating in um, specifically atlanta for those that don't know atlanta uh, airport is now the busiest in the world um, simply because of the location it's so convenient for international companies to really address the international uh, market so there's a quite a lot of um, additional facts that i mentioned here on the slide but I think um, the key thing for us is that um, this state keeps on popping up in the population growth. So it is pretty much one of the fastest growing uh, population growth that we've seen for a very long time. Uh, we've been um, part of this investing in the city since 2014. And over the last five years, we have seen this continuous growth. And every time we get there, it just amazes us how the state actually grows. So from that perspective, um, very, very buoyant state for from a business perspective. And then specifically Atlanta, um, the Atlanta Metropole is really large. Um, if you simply drive from north to south, east to west, it typically takes on average roughly about two to two and a half hours. Most of the time, if we visit our portfolio, we have to actually spend most likely full two days or now even a third day just to, to get to all the property. Like I mentioned, um, the Hartsfield Jackson Airport is the is a gateway city. Um, it's pretty much um, huge passenger flow and, and extremely convenient for a lot of Americans. Then from a business perspective, um, I've seen firsthand how the state actually lures large clients notably Mercedes-Benz and um, Hi Hyundai has um, actually relocated the North America headquarters down here south. If, if you can see my cursor near Marrow, um, and that is really, we're also very near to the airport. 
And then I think the, the key for us today is we're going to discuss uh, the property uh, which is located in the, let's call it the suburb called Sandy Springs or county as I call it. And um, this is on the proverbial ring road. This ring road is the 285. Um, that's pretty much right around Atlanta with the um, Atlanta's city center in the middle here. For those that know, Atlanta has actually got like two city centers, the mid city, and then the area a little bit north here, which is Bucket, which then flows into Sandy Spring, which is effectively the epicenter of the medical growth in Atlanta. So it's also the place where it's the highest concentration of medical office blocks, and I'll go into detail quite a lot. What we have seen in the past is that the 75 highway, this one going here to Chattanooga, and this one going to Riley in North Carolina, is proverbial creating a triangle, if you can see it. And this triangle led by the other highway, which is like a super busy highway, is called the Georgia 400. So this is the growth corridor, and we've seen quite a lot of development on this growth corridor. And obviously, specifically, um, are partnering with a partner that has been operating in this area for four decades. It's not often that we find a partner with that wealth of experience, and they have got numerous sites on the Georgia 400, um, where we have also, as obvious investors, have invested in the recent past. Um, so from that perspective, um, we're super excited about the location. And um, I'm going to go a little bit into the detail of this location. Um, Michiel, can I just stop you there? Michiel, we've had a question come through. Um, the question is, can you please explain the relationship between yourselves and the partners on the ground? So I'm assuming, I'm just trying to understand that, that relationship between the partners, what are the roles you guys as all base play, what are the roles the partners on the ground play, and, and how does that work? Okay. Um, I can go through that. Um, let me just complete this story on the location and then um, I'll jump into the partners. So sure. um, just want to make sure that um, I just finish off the story. Um, as I mentioned, here's the 285. And as you can see, uh, the Georgia 400. And this um, area is um, in the local language. It's called Pill Hill. It's as simple as taking pills. As you can see, the Northside Hospital is here, St. Joseph and Children. Most of the babies in, in the state of um, Georgia is born here. And our, our, our property partner in this specific case was Richmond Honan, and they have, have developed over a million square feet of um, real estate in this area. And it is just a very natural progression to simply go across to the other corner um, where the subject property is. And uh, before I go into the subject property, um, uh, Linda, let me explain um, how we um, do and work with um, our U.S. partners. So what we are set out to do is we are looking for um, partners that is absolute specialist in the medical real estate field, which is the fo focus of Orvest from a, a segment perspective in the market. Um, the Property partners typically have a minimum of 15 years of experience in that specific area. They are niche players and they normally have a pipeline of deals. What they are doing, they typically either managing a lot of properties or are developers. And like always, they are in the need of um, equity and also um, setting up partnerships with um, investors. And this is what um, obvious role is really setting up the partnerships and then actually managing the portfolio of properties with the partner. We are joint manager and we have also full stepping rights in a situation if the property partner for some reason um, do not perform. One of the key aspects of our property partners is that they have the ability to stand surety for the loans that we require to buy these properties. As you can think, um, if you have a multiple of investors um, contributing to the equity component of the project, um, it's not an easy task for them to actually stand surety in the United States for fairly large commercial loans. 
So this is one of the key aspects the property partners actually bring to the table is the fact that they typically stand surety for what we call non-recourse loans with bad boy car off out clauses. So the bank requires uh, American um, that's got a substantial balance sheet to actually still um, oversees the bad boy clauses, even though um, it is a non-recourse loan. And then the last aspect that the property partner does, um, they normally have an extreme good network to lease up these buildings. And that's part of the value add strategy to actually change tenants and, and add them. So these are the three main um, components, um, linen that our property partner brings to the table. So I hope I answered the question. Um, so uh, let me know if that uh, investor is happy with the answer. So yeah, no, that's um, great. Thanks. going a little bit deeper into the actual property, um, as I alluded to, um, this is just a different angle. These two buildings, we call them building 100 and 200, um, is actually the subject of the property. As you can see in the specific slide, it is um, directly across Spill Hill, and there's a very nice access road across the Georgia 400. And, and that is the reason why we really, really um, love this area. From an obvious perspective, um, just underneath the highway, these are the 285, we have got our Medical 9 investment over here. So we're pretty familiar with the area. And um, um, just some uh, additional information is that this whole area has been rezoned for a 12-story development and the actual parking lot of this building um, is going to get a full-blown additional medical campus. So it really is going to um, also get a higher concentration of medical office block in this area, similar to across the road. And the reason why that is relevant is that this bodes extremely well for the value of these properties because it will naturally be um, lifted up with additional value that's being created. Um, this area is so intense from a, from a uh, let's call it land location. The land has skyrocketed and the, the need to actually um, concentrate in terms of buildings, etc., is extremely high because of the huge demand that's coming here. So from a location perspective, I must be honest, um, Linden, this is pretty much um, from a location, most likely the, the building that is the best located in our um, portfolio so far. Um, so we're very, very happy with that. And lastly, obviously, um, a lot of the services that's in our building also then service the hospitals nearby. And one of the key criteria that we're looking um, for is on or near a hospital campus. The reason for that is there is a huge trend in the USA, which basically says that um, doctors that are normally forming part of the huge hospital systems want to now leave the hospital system and go out patient route, which means it's out contracted, and then they can actually set up their own practice with their own administrative systems uh, which is more, in a certain way, lucrative to the doctor and also less restrictive. So um, that is a big trend. And so having a building right across this huge medical hospital center bodes well for doctors that would like to really to have their own practice out of sight of the hospital system. So I think that is a, another major um, trend that we are seeing in the U.S. at the moment. So um, diving a little bit deeper into the property, um, this is really the value play that we've got. Um, a, a large portion of the building is not medical, and our strategy is that some of the other tenants you'll see has got shorter leases. We are going to transform them into medical. Why we like the eVest, um, as you can see, it is a pretty strong lease till 2029. And from an investor perspective, if we have an investment horizon of five years, this bodes extremely well for when we want to sell to a new buyer. And the buyer, as we call it, will still have some meat on the bone. That means that the lease has still got some value because it's still longer, uh, at least another five years. So the key focus for us is Northside Hospital, um, which is going to renew its lease. We're already in negotiation. 
and that's part of what you see here. So if we manage to do that and change these smaller deals into medical tenants, um, then we would really significantly add value to the building. Um, why is that possible? Um, is that um, in this specific area, like I mentioned, there's such a need for medical practitioners that would like to set up practices, and we believe that this will happen. From an investment strategy perspective, um, as Orbvest um, and our partner, we have uh, already made provision that when there is a gap between the existing tenants and the new tenants, if we do what we call a rollover, um, those rent we have pre-raised um, um, as part of the initial capital so that we have it in the kitty, so that transition should be very smooth. So also um, our partner, um, Richmond Honan, his father has actually founded Northside Hospital. And as a natural, um, I think there's an extreme strong relationship with Northside Hospital and the indication is that this major lease of 30 uh, percent uh, will be extended. So all in all, a very solid strategy to to um, to add value. And the way that we add value is that you'll see when we when we when we change the the office tenants to the medical tenants, we have a possibility to add a premium to the actual rent. And for that premium, they ask us normally to build in some of the equipment. And that we actually then finance through them. We call that tenant installation, and that just bodes well that the doctor would like to really stay there for a longer period. Like always, um, investments have risk, and we've well, tried Michael, to. Can I just, Michael, can I just stop you there? We have a question here. It says, please confirm the value add here is in the change to the tenant base, not additional physical construction or renovations. Yes, um, so um, the actual change in tenant base, maybe to explain to the investor, is that a change in tenant base also requires that the new tenant sometimes would like to have a different layout on the floor or install additional equipment. So there would be um, what we call tenant installation, which is construction. And so that would be the construction. And then, as I alluded to, the overall area of the building, around the building, there will be construction, and that construction is earmarked to be done in about two years' time, which bodes extremely well for the time in roughly five years' time when we would like to exit, that the surrounding area has already lifted up. So I can't exclude that impact. So. Um, Sorry for the long answer on, on that question. No, perfect. I guess a follow up. Are you predicting that there might be cash flow implications at that point when you're doing the additional buildings, or has your financial model fairly much got a steady return, projected steady return uh, through the lifetime of this five years? So um, we expect that the, there will actually be an increase in cash flow um, in year four and five. Um, because of the change in tenants, and that's also part of the, the value add strategy. The moment that we increase the net operating income of a property, that is directly in relation to the to the to the value of the building, and that also then ensures that we then have the capital gain that we expect in five years, uh, because that's directly proportional to the higher lease rates that we get. And for the existing uh, lease rates, we normally have um, uh, escalation per year. So for those that know that from a commercial perspective, your value of your building is directly proportional to the income of the building. And then, of course, it is related to the environment around the building. So if the buildings around you are super valuable because of the high concentration medical office blocks, you can also enjoy that higher concentration because there's not a way that you can actually um, copy or expand or create competition in the same place. So from that perspective, um, the location bodes extremely well because of the scarcity of land. All right, so comfortable, Lyndon? 
Yeah, great. So Brian, who asked that question, thanks. It, it certainly sounds like even though there are plans in year three or four maybe to do some additional construction, it won't impact the projected cash and cash returns during those times because it will be uh, offset by the additional revenue. Michiel, uh, have we got that correct for Brian? Yeah, no, thank you, Lennon. I think you summarized it very well. Um, from our perspective, um, we also like to deal with the interest rate risk and to have it fixed. Um, so that's a very specific focus for those that has been following the US um, from an interest rate perspective. You also have seen that they have um, actually not um, increased the federal reserve rates in the recent area and we actually expect it to go down. So from our perspective, um, banking wise the american system has been extremely stable the lenders are very strict at the moment so we have nowhere near the crazy lending that was uh, prevalent in 2008 so all in all we are pretty happy with that then from our perspective the other thing that we um, also looked at uh, very carefully is from the senior loan perspective um, we have a uh, debt coverage ratio, what that basically means is how many times we can pay the loan payment out of the net rate operating income and you'll see it's very specifically the senior loan um, is at that levels. So all in all, um, coming back to the overall, um, we expect um, the investment to have an average cash on cash um, expectation over the five years of 8.1. Um, remember that is a projection. Um, as best as we can forecast it. Then from an internal rate of return perspective, um, that is the 15% internal rate of return for those investors that's not familiar with that, is the summation of the average income cash flow, the 8.8, 8.1, and then over and above that, um, the capital gains that we expect. What is very significant about this opportunity is two things. First of all, the deal has already been bought. That means our property partner already owns the property, so there's no risk for this deal to fall flat from a perspective that we still have to buy it. And secondly, I encourage all investors that if they're interested in this deal to actually move their money as quick as possible. We are taking 500,000 tranches into the deal and from the moment that tranche is in the deal, investors actually earn their returns. So it's not like a, a, a deal where you first have to buy the property and then only you return. So there's a, a very minimal gap between movement of your money and starting earning money. And then lastly, um, our property partner has got the, pers or the view that they are a generational company it means that they are looking at holding properties 20 30 years they have been done doing this for the last 40 years and um, they are very clearly would like to keep this building as a long-term asset and that bodes well for the investors because it's then a planned exit what the property partner does it simply refinance out the investors as if it was a sale and how we keep everybody straight and honest is we um, simply use professional third party to evaluate the value of the building at the time. And then we actually then give the investors a return based on that external evaluation. So that will be a third party. And that means that the, the, the property has got a very fixed plan exit. And uh, we don't have to source a buyer to buy it. We already know how it's going to happen. And from that perspective, I think just bodes extremely well for this investors. Likewise, um, we are very conservative in our projection and uh, Lyndon, for those investors that has been with us, um, you'll see we always exceed our expectations. So hopefully this is the base case. Um, I've got some good, good feeling that it's, it's really going to be a little bit more than that. But like always, we're conservative and it's no way that we can say something for sure. Um, but believe me, we have done our homework on this specific deal, and I believe um, that it's a very, very solid investment in a very solid place. Yeah, then, um, like I said, the Michiel, exit strategy, just to repeat Michiel, it again. Michiel, I've just got two questions that have come through, um, and, and I actually think the second one you might you might cover here, so I'll, I'll hold it. Uh, but the first one was, what are 
it, I'm assuming it's from Kieran. Kieran, I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, but it says, what are the impacts of state or federal tax implications on the returns? So I'm assuming that on your previous slide you had a, uh, a return and it was um, pre-tax. I think that the, the question is specifically around that. Yeah, um, for, for those investors um, that invest through their local entities in the United States, the impact of the, the state and federal taxes um, will be in respect to your personal tax um, situation. That means that the property will deliver pre-tax um, returns to the investor and then the US investor will then um, take care of the tax implication in their personal capacity. With regards to um, the offshore investors that use our offshore listed vehicle, the, um, the impact on that would be is that they, um, if there's a tax change, we as Orbvest in the project um, pay the, the state and federal taxes um, in the investment structure. Once that has been paid, we repatriate the net proceeds to the offshore listed entity, which we currently have and then investors get then their returns as dividends, both income and capital. So from that perspective, um, we've got a fairly efficient um, tax structure that we've been doing for the last four years, and the impact on that um, should be very minimal. As a matter of fact, the United States has actually reduced the tax races. For those that know, uh, Mr. Trump has uh, got the tax changes through that the corporate tax has dropped from well in the 30s now to about 21%, if I'm not mistaken. So at the moment, the trend in the United States is actually to pay lower tax and not to change tax. If Mr. Trump loses the election, then uh, your guess is as good as mine. Great, Michael. So if I heard you correctly, the the structure in the US will pay the. Sorry, we're getting a lot of echo. I'm not sure if you're hearing it from your side, um, but the. Let me just see if there's a. Let's try that again. So my understanding is that the structure in the US pays the local US-based tax that is required before they distribute it to the offshore structures. Um, in this case, uh, you know, Wells Migrate will be an investor into that offshore structure. So we will get that through that and then we will distribute through our systems. But the initial tax piece will be covered in the US um, and that, that will vary. If I, my understanding of the tax situation, it will vary depending on how your structure is declaring that income, whether it's going to be uh, dividends, capital gains, but you handle that. Um, have you got any sense on, on that, that impact uh, from your previous projects or your current projects? And please, I, I know all our channel partners and affiliates, you understand that no one on this call is a tax expert and we're certainly not giving tax advice at this point. Um, Although Kieran, I do understand your, your question is you're just trying to get an overall sense, maybe from past projects as to what impact that, that tax uh, at the US level might have in terms of those returns. But Hill, is it something you'd be willing to, to give a kind of an overall sense of? Yeah, look, um, when you um, review our product brochure, um, you will see that um, we have specifically outlined the expected returns for a US investor and the expected returns for a foreign investor. Um, Lyndon, this includes obviously um, through the wealth migrate structures if they have that. Um, I can only talk up to the Orvest structure level in the offshore side. And you will mark that the only real difference is not on the income level, but only on the capital gains level. So if there typically there could be a little bit impact on the capital gains, but as far as I could, as we have seen in the last um, years, is that the tax environment should be fairly stable um, because of the situation in terms of um, the U.S. politics, where um, the two decision-making bodies in, in their parliament are in different parties. So our expectation at the moment is we don't expect a tax change. So if there is a tax change, the implication normally is a little bit on the, the capital gains, the, the, the income side is pretty neutral. All right, great. So uh, Kieran and others, we have got all the um, information 
from Orbez for this deal and inside that will explain the estimated returns that you might receive differently as a offshore investor versus US. So we'll certainly make sure that we pass those on to you um, if you haven't already got them. Uh, Michael, just the, the second question that had come through was from Claudia and she was saying at the point when you are exiting and you might cover it here and you get that third party to do the value at exit, is it Orbvest or the partner on the ground that chooses the third party? Um, normally, it's actually the banks. Uh, the banks um, is the guys that's actually going to lend the money, and normally they are they are fairly strict in the procedure and how it should be done. So normally that gets dictated to us and the property partner. Great, thank you, Claudio, for that one. Uh, that's it from the questions for now. So, Michael, please keep going. Yeah, now I think um, I'm pretty much through the investment. Um, I think. Just to summarize is that um, we really believe this is in a superior location. Um, I think uh, the second thing is that um, the environment, um, like I outlined, really bodes well for this medical precinct, as we can call it. Um, we still believe that uh, the 8% dividends is exceptional for this stability of returns. So from that perspective, um, we've just been in a, a lots of part of the world. So we're getting very, very positive feedback on that. And I think um, the reason for that, Linden, as both Wealth Migrate and Obvious, we really strive to, to do this at a minimum cost. And really, we and the investors only really make our money at the end of the project where we share in the capital gain. And uh, that just makes sure that all our interests are aligned with the investor's interest. And uh, this recipe has been working for, for Obvious and Wealth Migrate for a very long time. And we now also in the first phase of actually having our first full cycle investment. Uh, we've been doing this now for five years and we are in the process of selling our first major portfolio. And uh, that's extremely exciting for us because now we can actually prove that uh, we've made investment fly the investment returns has been better than projected, and then we are doing a full cycle deal. So that's that's what we're busy with. And then I think key key for obvious is this is a curated deal. Uh, the due diligence is virtually done, no exceptions. We're happy with the deal, and therefore we can definitely see very consistent dividend. And then number one focus for us is capital preservation. And therefore, we in a location that really, really makes sense from a stability, from a legal framework perspective, um, in the epicenter of growth in the southeast corner of the United States. So, very, very appealing value proposition. All right. Thank you, Lyndon. And um, that's it. I hope, I hope I get a lot of questions. It's always nice to to really answer some questions and give some more insights, if possible. Yeah, great, Michiel. So I no, there haven't been any. Let me just have a look here. Sorry, there might be a question here. That's just another one that's come through in addition to what's um, already been asked. She has just Ian asking it uh, for recording so they can send it out to their team leaders. So that's not a problem, Ian. We'll make sure we do that. Uh, let me just get. There's another one here. Uh, Lyndon, uh, maybe for your information, I think um, we'll definitely supply it through to everybody. We also made a specific product video on this deal. So over and above the webinar, we also got a product um, video. And then we also got some very interesting footage of the deal. So um, we'll definitely make that all available to you and your investors. Uh, uh, Michiel and, Lin and Lyndon, I've, I've already uh, uh, circulated that by Lee. I uh, just confirmed that you have got it to your um, your affiliates. Absolutely. I think Lee has sent out a link to most of the affiliates already, but uh, if not, we will be sending that out later today. Um, there is another question here for you, Michiel. It's on the understanding that uh, you raise equity from multiple different places and Wealth Migrate is just um, one of your options. There's a question here about how many dollars has already been put down by investors? Or are we still in the first 500,000 package? Um, we, we have surpassed that already. Um, we have got commitments of roughly one and a half to two million dollars already. So it's going pretty quick um, because most investors now are not waiting for the deal closing, but they are moving the money as soon as possible. So 
Um, we are already um, in the first package, will be a little bit larger because of the escrow requirements, um, more towards a million dollars. And then once we pass the million dollars, then every half a million thereafter, we will then um, put down. Great. And do you have uh, the follow up question? Do you have an expected timeline? Um, you know, absolutely. So to follow up as well, uh, we will certainly be supporting uh, all our channel and affiliate partners with information and the process to help them get their clients into the deal. But do you have an expected timeline as to when this deal is likely to close, either from a, a time perspective or from your current projections, so that we can really work with them as they're approaching their clients? Yeah, we normally um, see that um, these type of investments take roughly about three months to raise. Uh, we had a bit of a start in April where there was a lot of holidays, but uh, we've definitely seen it moving faster now. So our time frame is pretty much, I think, um, I would suggest end of June, mid of July, I think um, this deal will be closed. Um, there's a number of players that's starting to look at it. They're going through the um, due diligence, and once they, the partners or the affiliates has done their checks, normally um, they then also recommend it to their clients, and then things happen quite fast. So, um, so my suggestion is um, don't delay. Um, this is really a significant opportunity, um, which doesn't come often. Um, so, uh, yeah. So my suggestion is, I think you're going to have a, roughly about a month and a half maybe two months left. Uh, Michael, I've got one more question here. Um, it is, in terms of the investment strategy, this is listed on the Wealth Migrate platform as a core deal, though it sounds more like it is a core plus deal. Can you comment? So maybe I'm happy to take a stab at that. So um, thank you very much for that question. Yes, we are using the standard investment strategies um, on our platform. And just the difference between the two, uh, as, a, as a general overview for everyone, core deals are very much um, uh, A-class investments with A-class tenants where the building is pretty much tenanted as best and as well as the investment, the, the real estate investment firm can expect, and it's a very safe, stable investment. Whereas a core plus, it's the same quality of building, same quality of uh, position, but there is an opportunity through improving the tenant base or the length of the lease to get a bit of added uh, capital growth value through that change in terms of, as Michael explained earlier, the way the building is evaluated. Uh, so yes, I would I would certainly agree from um, what Michael has said today that this is certainly a core plus opportunity and that there is some opportunities here for actual value growth through the changes that Michael and the team are planning to make in terms of the actual uh, changes to the tenants and the leasing structure. Okay, would you would you agree with it or disagree with that summary? No, I think Lyndon perfectly. Um, the whole idea um, that we as Orbvest have set ourselves out to do is the first principle is capital preservation, which is pretty much what I think we all understand as core. And then the second part of the strategy, we always like to add a little bit of value to it uh, where we can get a little bit of a kicker or a little bit of growth on it and that's where the plus comes from so i i support your your assessment Lennon. yeah and I, and I think just to add on that so as a follow-up question is why would we not include this as maybe the opportunistic or the value add deal is because um those often do require some kind of change to the underlying um, either structure or strategy of the of the building, whereas I don't think this pushes those boundaries too far. You, you step very much in a more conservative approach. Uh, it's not like you're wanting to do major innovations or changes. It, it's just through the opportunity you've spotted in the tenant in the tenant list. So I, 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 uh, so once again, I, we do not believe this goes into the um, value add or opportunistic space. We certainly agree with Michiel's comments that this is a core core plus opportunity. 
All right, great. Um, Achille and Justin, there are no more questions that have come through, and I see our time is pretty much up. We are perfectly on the hour. So I really want to thank both of you for your time today. Um, as, as you know, when we do get any additional comments or queries from our channel partners, affiliates, if we uh, would like to connect you with them on, we will certainly uh, keep that relationship. So to all of those of you who joined us and joined myself and Machil and Justin today, thank you very much. If you do have any further questions or follow-up or you need support in any way, please do reach out to myself and Lee, and we'll make sure to get you all the information you need. Uh, guys, thank you very much. Appreciate your time today. Thank you, Leonard. Thank you for hosting us. Thanks, guys.